did last NSAT school test in Lagos. I uh, was opportune to be in some places. You know, it started, it started peacefully. But we all, we all, we all know how it ended. It was, it was, it was very bad. So for me, I think the government to engage with the protester, that's number one. No, and number two, to so look into the cause, the root cause of the protest, which is the, the, the economic hardship in the country. You know, most families now are not living well. So for, for me, if, it, if the, government, the, government, the government is having the protest, the, the way everyone is having the protest, the government will also look at the root cause. If the government does address the root cause, the same way is addressing that the protest will not hold. I think the country, nobody will, nobody will fear the protest. The president himself, he admitted that he took part in a protest there. That was in January. During the during when the, the former president, good luck, Jonathan, and the, that was why they wanted to remove the press of the, the, the that time. Well, uh, Mr. Ayo, you are a publisher uh, for Standard Times newspaper. And captured on the front page of your own newspaper this morning is um, a story yes, uh, that the DHQ and DSS are warning against the action, the nationwide protest. And also, the writer says that the DSS have identified the planned protest. Calls have been made in the last couple of days or even weeks to the federal government to engage in a dialogue, in a roundtable dialogue with uh, these protest planners. Even though not CTS and not uh, without names, but now that the DSS has come up, they have found out who is behind it. Don't you think, instead of stern warnings and threats by the DSS and the DHQ, the government should instead take this opportunity to have that that dialogue that has been called for several times by the public with the protest planners. If I'm on the part of the dialogue, if I'm on the part of the dialogue, um, that's where I am. That's where that's that's belief. That's the belief of many people. You need to dialogue with these people if, if you really know them. You know, uh, Magister Palado. Two days ago said he won't participate if he loved the protest he won't participate because he does not know the organizers now that we, now that dss they have uncovered the organizers now that we know them that they they know them yes. i think it's right for the government to engage them talk to them and see you see the the, the, the problem is the hardship in the problem here here it is visible so if you engage them, and the way to engage them is to see that if I buy Gary, they can see that they are yesterday. Today is not the day of the day. You can see that they're working. What is this? This is a. This is a. In as much you know, as you, you, are, in as much as you are calling for, for a dialogue, yes, you are for the dialogue. You are supporting that the federal government should call uh, the protest planners and have a sit down with them, listen to their pleas and attend to them. How safe or how what's the assurance of safety for these protest planners should they agree to reveal their faces or names and you know dialogue with the FG? Uh, DSS has revealed that they know them, but nothing has been made public yet so what's the assurance of safety for these people the, if the government cannot uh, uh, ensure their safety then it means that the government is not ready for dialogue i don't understand yes first of all the government will at least assure them of their safety that is what the government has that now, Mr. Ayo, let's also make room for more persons to join the conversation. And for those watching online, feel free to head over to our online platform to drop your comments. In the studio, joining us is uh, Honorable Cletus Obun, a former lawmaker as well, 
Uh, it's more of the concerns because Anik is, is tantamount to bringing the nation to his knees. And many would say it is treasonable to plan a protest that might lead to anarchy. Now, whilst the DSS and Defence Headquarters are saying they have identified funding lines for the protest, persons are calling for dialogue. There's skepticism about being able to dialogue and walk back to your house the same way you came. And let's get your thoughts as you join the conversation. Thanks for having me this morning. I must apologize for coming a bit late. But let me say that it is juvenile to constantly be talking about afraid of being arrested. We have all been protesting along with this president. From June 12, 1993, we've been protesting. So nobody's, well, if you're worried about your safety, what fella will say, they're afraid to die, no one die. My mother day for house, my father day for house. If you have that, then why are you protesting? The intention is, I want to lay down my life for my country. Well, now, when you now say you are not, the second contradiction and the juvenile thing about it is that each time you come, you say, we don't have leaders. So the same thing was said in the NSAS in protest. NSAS, NSAS protest. And then you said it was just a, a mere protest. Tinubu was protesting. We were protesting. We didn't send anybody to the streets. We went to the streets. That means we were in control of our protest and our direction was straight. We don't want this. At the time we were about to do, we didn't want this. We stated our mission and walked the streets and came back safely. Nobody was hurt. There was no fight anywhere. So all the... the, 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 the Warning you are hearing is not don't protest. It is don't let it turn violent because the experience of answers cannot be repeated. I know what happened in Calabar. The former senate leader's house was brought down. The civil senator at that time, his house was brought down. The international conference center is, has not been fixed till today. They're just doing bits and pieces. This is just Calabar. Where it was not even the center, the epicenter was Lagos. I, I watched a policeman being stabbed in the face. People didn't see that. When I challenged CNN to bring the footages they were bringing from amateur videos, they apologized to Nigeria because Nigeria was busy doing it. came from CNN. CNN was merely repeating the footages of what was sent to them. Not one jot of blood was shown on the venue at that toll gate. Go and check back and convince me that it ever happened. The people stampeded because of the gunshots in the air. They only showed the gunfire in the air. And like I told them at the time, if you say about 400 people were gathered, the capacity of an AK-47 is 300 meters. That is to say, with 300, within 300 meters, any object around it must go down. Now, if you have 500 people gathered in one place, and the body of a human being contains at least 75% water, liquid, if you shot 200 people on that site, that place should be a pool of blood. That we should be swimming in blood. So we came back here. Today, we are asking you, and the DSS is telling you, do not turn violent. We are going to watch you. But if you turn violent, no state on earth. Why is Trump being tried? Because he turned it, it, it was an insurrection. It was calculated as such. Yeah. People died. People were injured. And the American state is trying him till today because of the, the nature of their own laws. And this is a, over a 200 year democracy. You want a 64 year old democracy to tolerate that? And you are talking about Kenya. Every time you talk, somebody says, Kenya, Kenya. Are we Kenya? By what parameters are we measuring with Kenya? But but you you said you said that what the DSS is asking of the protesters is that not that they shouldn't protest, but that they should protest peacefully and not lead to anarchy, anarchy. or any mayhem. Yes. However, we have had reports coming from different quarters of the country. Uh, the Yobe State Governor Malaboni is saying that no protest will hold in his state. The Jigawa State Governor has asked the, the protest planners to pray instead of protesting. The FCT Minister has said there is no time allocated whatsoever in the FCT for any form of protest like that. These are different reactions coming in from people who should be stemming down the agitations by the protest planners. Do you think we are headed in the right path with this? Yes, very much so. Why the so? chief security officer of a state will not allow, for example, in your base state, here you are having bandits. What would they do? Simply, you are the one, so it is not us. They jump into the fray. And it is no longer about the protest. It becomes dealing with banditry. You are just giving an opportunity, a leeway, for bandits to jump into the city, the city center. If you are moving between Benishek and Damaturu, this has been the epicenter of all the crises between, in, between Medugri and Damaturu. You know, there's even a gate there. I've been there several times. That is always the place. You see bandits passing. You see the Boko Haram people passing, and each time there's an attack, it is on that road. So that means that within those bushes, between Benishek and Damaturu, Benishek and, 
and Meduguri, between uh, uh, Gaidam and Darchi and Damaturu, those areas are in trouble. Between Geshwa and uh, Uguru, between Guru and Hadeja, the whole of those areas are, in fact, what we call ungoverned spaces. So this means these people are just there waiting. So if you give them the opportunity using a protest in those type of areas, is there any responsible government? The unintended consequences of this type of actions is what they are talking about. Nobody in a democracy will say that there should be no protest. Nobody. Even the president of Nigeria has not said so. All he's saying is, will we be able to control the situation when we take off? I have protested and I will protest myself. He has said so over and over. But will you be able to go? When I protested, nobody was touched, nobody was hurt, nobody was arrested. Yes. Now, because now let's, we, let's see if Mr. Ayo is still on the line. Mr. Ayo, if you're still there with us, another challenge with being able to ensure for the provision of peaceful protests is a challenge with the amount of boots on ground. Now, the police is reportedly overwhelmed. And uh, in having the army on ground, a lot of persons are skeptical following the incidents of the NSAS protest. How best? Can states who want to ensure the citizens are given their fundamental rights to protest do so within the confines of keeping law and order? Well, first of all, we all know that the right to protest has been enshrined in the Constitution of Nigeria 1999 as amended, and we are the citizens they have the right to protest. If the police, they also have responsibility of uh, guarding the protesters to make sure that the, the protest is not hijacked. So for me, the law enforcement agent should, should uh, take their to, to their responsibility and do it very well. And the users, as I've said before, the government should interface with them. You know, from what I'm saying, I think the government is is uh, is pressing the strategic button. Each time we hear the 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 traditional rulers, the, the, the national assembly, everyone is talking about the protest. So even the ordinary citizen, they are even afraid. But what will happen on August one? Many people, many parents, somebody like me, I've called all my brother. I'm from Abukuta, even though I stay in Kenya. I've called them, I've warned them. Because of the way we are hearing of the plan. And many people are like that. So for me, I think, first of all, the government should, should be playing. Call these people. Assure them of their safety. As long as they know that the 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 DSN gang they have covered them who talk to them and when you talk to them talk to Nigerians too because you know the last instance the reason it escalated was because there were there were no known leaders now they say they've known the leaders call them let's know them but the agitations they said because of hardship we all know there there is hardship in the country but we should not even add thought to the jury. Because from August 1 to August 10, you know, many Nigerians, they work from hand to mouth. If they don't work in a particular day, then there will be a problem. So if you don't show that they follow me for 10 days, that's a problem. It will affect everybody. So we, we have a challenge. But we should not escalate, we should not add more problem. Well, well, I think the government should also Dialogue is Mr. Ayo's major point there. I I'll come to you, Honorable Obun. The challenge now is before dialogue even begun, we saw quite the bickering between the SA to the President on Information and Strategy, Mr. Bayo Nanuga, and uh, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, where some words were misconstrued, many would say, but exchanged other ways, with allegations that he was spared in this protest in line with IPO. Now, Mr. Obi took that to the law courts to challenge it. Many are asking if that exchange could have been better handled in the need for dialogue and peace building. You know, one of the problems we have had, even from the last regime, is information management. It is key. Information management is key. It builds or destroys 
either a regime or a country. This is the language of a militarized state. If you ever suspect that this person is escalating propaganda to that level, exacerbates and creates more crisis, and that level of escalation is unnecessary. If you said uh, Shoinka himself was forced to say that when they were bashing him, you, uh, those people who call themselves uh, obedient and all, I spoke to one of them who was a, a spokesperson who called his name. I want him to come out himself and say it. He's my friend who was in all the studios campaigning very assiduously for Peter B and the Labour Party. Today he tells me he will do no politics again because it's called that he has been scammed. A very notable figure in Labour Party. Of course, you can see how they are being turned into tatters. It was a movement, a headless movement. And with that type of nebulous, um, uh, amorphic uh, organization, you are bound to have problems of communication because you should have who to talk to. For instance, the government in trying to get to the grassroots to talk to people, didn't find those who are spearheading. If NRC says we are going on strike, government will call labor leaders, TUC, NRC, that, ASU, come let's discuss. This one, who are you going to call? They have told you they don't have leaders. That level of perfidy is injurious to the state. And nobody is going to watch Libya. But in but, linking it now well, to a party and, and... And a person whose supporters are vociferous, whose supporters have been quite, uh, what Shonka calls them, um, uh, Professor Wale Shonka calls them uh, social media bandits. They have sufficiently harassed almost everybody on social media spaces. And all these are... Are tied to a particular political party and a tendency. Now, I can even tell you that they are even beyond Peter B himself. He can no longer control them. The crowd is beyond him now. So they are no longer even doing Peter B. They are doing it for their own personal hate or their own personal worry. It is no longer about a political party. It is just that they had a toga and a blow. And that is what is happening today. So let me say this to you. As far as I'm concerned, and as far as Nigerians know, those to be talked to are being talked to. If we have those who think that they are leading this team, let them come out and say so. It is not an offense. What is offensive to the Nigerian constitution is violence. Don't tell me about it is a right to protest. It is a right also in Nigeria not to deprive another person in the course of expressing your grievance. You can't tell us that 250 million Nigerians are going to be on the street. It is not true. The people going on the street who are planning or who want to go on this protest do not make even 1% of the Nigerian population. And I can tell you that for free. We are going to watch it for 10 days in the media. Let us see all the teams across the 36 states and Abuja and let's see whether we are going to get 1 million people. Well, well if you remember the statement by Onanuga, he didn't just he didn't just finger or point at um, Peter Obi's supporters as the faces of the masterminders of the protest. He also touched on IPOB which is domiciled in the southeastern part of the country. We have also seen reports coming in today by um, some newspaper headlines where it says that southeast youths would not engage in any form of protest in the region. Yet again, I ask, these allegations that were labeled against, you know, OB supporters and IPOB, isn't it sort of detrimental to uh, the peace and unity that Everybody is had working tirelessly and you know vigorously towards achieving. Did you hear me lay the foundation that communication miscom miscommunication had been a bane for a long time within the party, within the government? At a point we are here when the president was to go to the National Assembly. And two media aides from the same office were giving two contradictory, contradictory statements. statements. I'm a member of the peace. I'm a foundation member. So anything that happens to the party will ache me because I have spent my time and my personal resources. I've held no government position. So I can speak my mind because I spent my time and my money and took risk at the formation of this party. I'm interested in it. I'll follow it to the end. I'm not ready to decamp. I'm not going to any party. I've been here for more than 22 years. So I will not let anybody come here and destroy what we have built to give the democracy. It's very slow in coming, but I am confident. When I said that we are going to win, as at 2012-2011 in Crossway, and I said this bandit called PDP was going to leave. I got them vagabonds in power. Let us manage language, honourable. No, no, let me say. I said it. It is in the papers. Google me and see it. It was in newspapers, casting headlines. So I'm not saying anything new. I'm not saying what I said. VIPs, vagabonds in power. I said so. 
I was the first person to use that, which was fella. But the point I'm making is that we will not allow people to come in here. And that is one of the things we are talking about, the president. Bringing those who are foundation members of this party, who have a stake, not those who are just beds of passage. And who just think that it is government come and go. Now, Honorable Kletus, some people are of the opinion that the government, security agencies, and other stakeholders are, are amplifying the planned protest more than they should. Uh, that the uh, the calls for peace and calm and all of that coming even before the protest, you know, has held is even more than the calls and agitations that were made during the NSAS, NSAS protest. Why are we seeing a particular interest in this particular in this uh, uh, planned protest? Why is there so much call for them to desist from what they they plan to do? Four years ago, 2020, we ran into this issue of. We are angry, we are angry. And SAS, it was about the police. Not even the entire police, not mobile police force, the not the CID. It was this, the SAS. Just for SAS, you know, you saw the volume of damage that was done across the country. Police headquarters is in Abuja. So what were they doing in Lagos? To tell you the miscarriage that mob action can, what uh, Shakespeare calls the, the plebeians can do. So clearly, it was directed. So what we are doing in Lagos is first headquarters in Lagos. If Ansar's headquarters in Abuja, first police headquarters in Abuja, what were they doing in Lagos? So it was targeted. So when Onanuga is talking, talking from the background of that experience in which certain people were targeted. And they left even the president who was sitting then, it was about Tinubu, who was holding no position in government, well, but just supported. Well, if Today, I where we are now, is that I agree with you to some extent that we are giving too much public, free publicity to this event yes. more than is required and this is what again goes back to the point of information management that i started with it is not in the interest of the party to be too forward somehow it, the intention was to blow it out of proportion and therefore take the air the steam from the team that is about to go out to protest but whether that is achieved or not whether it has back boomeranged it's a different matter for us to discuss after the protest has started. But I can assure you some, one effect that it will create. One is that it has taken the air off the protesters. And that less and less Nigerians are going to be more afraid. Because we now seem to know what they want to do, how they want to do it. So everybody is prepared for it. Now, Honorable Cletus Obun has harped on the need for better communication management in line of the August 1st planned nationwide protest. But whilst that is the case, a lot of schools of thought are of the opinion that if the government of the day had better ways to manage information, it would forestall the hardship in Nigeria. Whilst the coming on board of Dagote refinery has been applauded, it has suffered a blow. In communications as handled by the NMDPR chief executive, Alhaji Farouk Ahmed. Now we see on the Matrix newspaper that the Senate has stepped in with an invitation to the CBN, the NNPCL, the NPA, and the NMDPR over what they call an alleged economic sabotage. Well, because of time, uh, let's quickly get uh, Mr. Ayo's thoughts in a minute or two, and then we'll come back to wrap up other conversations in our studio, if Mr. Ayo is still with us. Well, well on, the issue, on the issue of the Dangote refinery, it's, it's, it's sad that such a project, project of that magnitude is having such issue. Many of us, many Nigerians are looking forward to Dagote Refinery as one of the as, as one of those things that will solve the challenge we are facing, especially in the oil sector. <laughs> the CBN and every other agency is involved to look into it because if we if by their actions we are able to answer the smooth sale of Dagote Refinery, it may affect other investors, other investors of the company to the country. Those are the Dr. Ajay Barikini on said. You cannot be calling for investors, for direct investors, when you are treating your own investor with this thing. If there are issues around it, I think it should be fine. All right, thank you very much, so Mr. Ayer, for your time I, on the program. I don't know if you have been there before, but if you have been there before, you know that we can't allow so project of such magnitude to have issues like this. We it's appreciate issues. you, Mr. Ayo, for your time on the program. 
I'm afraid okay. time time will not allow for us to go further, but I'm hoping we can also have you subsequently going into the new week. We appreciate you. Well, we are, we know, as I said before, we are celebrating the third year of Salah Times today. So, we, 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 we have to start our celebration now. So, we will we'll, we'll talk in time. <laughs> All the best to you, Mr. Ayo. He is the publisher of Standard Times newspaper. We appreciate you. Now, Honorable Boone, we have a little less than five minutes to close our discussions on local issues before we go to the foreign scenes. The challenge here is that laboratory findings prove the NNDPR wrong. Dangote is now also projected to upset 90 major European players in the oil market following his high-quality diesel. Uh, at home now, they are calling for treating our investors better, much like Mr. Ayer said. The Senate is stepping in for the third time with the NMDPR not in the habit of coming to the table when they're invited. Yes, I think the cartel... Let me tell you what's happening in this country. NMPC is a government, then there's a federal government. There are two governments in this country. Why so, sir? Tell me, you are a journalist, please. How much barrels of oil do we produce in Nigeria in the last five years? Okay, in the last five months. That information because is I say somewhat months. classified. It has never been done. It doesn't exist anywhere in Nigeria. So how can a, com a government company, a government interest investment, be shrouded in that level of secrecy, in which even the president of Nigeria, himself a major player in the oil industry, would exon mobile, an auditor would Deloitte, such international conglomerates in strategic professional respect, this sitting president, President Tinubu, will not know what is happening in NNPC. And you keep those people there, that level of cartel. I am not a friend to the Dangote level of investment. I do not agree. Nowhere on earth, even the most capitalist like America, allows its critical assets in the hands of individuals. It doesn't happen anywhere. My study of political economy did not show so. Japan doesn't allow its auto industry to flow, flow, flow freely. Yeah. The rail in China does not flow freely. So the, what, they are, what is happening to Dangote is an affront on Nigerians. And he must be rescued. And that is why I thank the Senate president, this 10th Senate, for its intervention. It must get to the root of it, and people must pay the price for it. Well, well uh, Honorable Auburn, there have been questions raised over the sudden importation of about $2 billion worth of uh, petroleum products from Malta. And if you recall, some allegations were made also by uh, Elijah Ali Kodakote with regard to you know, these cabals having... Uh, oil wells in, in Malta and thereby disrupting the flow of whatever it is that they are supposed to be doing for Nigeria. Uh, what do you make of this revelation? We have talked about the cartel and the Senate of Nigeria is for the Nigerian people I must say no jam because the coming on stream of this refinery, nobody has challenged the fact that it is the best on earth. That is the best anywhere in the world. So if we have that in Nigeria and the only way in which we can utilize it is to undermine it with a cartel in NPC and calling it out one breath it is a company at another breath it is a, an untouchable clearly there is something fundamentally wrong thank you very much honorable we'll come back to look at some foreign stories but we will take a quick commercial break it has been quite engaging this morning do not go anywhere stay with us